I thought, what better way to kick it off than with our favorite mythic post Drano. Yeah, I am just covered in Drano prop. Hang on. This is actually a cocktail I created called the Veronica Sawyer Vodka Slushy. I just made it on the rocks rather than blended and the ice has now melted. So if you need a boozy Halloween drink that's super tasty and doubles as a prop, definitely check out that recipe. I'll leave it down below. Ooh, look how pretty that is. It's like a lava lamp, but with vodka. But without any further ado, let's get into the tutorial. I'm using my Heather Chandler tutorial that I uploaded a couple weeks ago as a base already. Ready. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below. But basically, we're going to use this as a jumping off point. First thing first, we're gonna go ahead and take off this lipstick. And swipe on the balm.com by Glossier. You can take any lip balm. I just wanted to swipe something on because my lips felt a little dry. To carve out my face, I'm going to be using these three eyeshadows. Of course, you don't have to use these shades specifically. This is just what I had on hand. I would recommend, however, using matte shadows. That means, like, without sparkle or shimmer. Real quick, I'm going to remove my makeup in the shape of my natural eye bags, hello designer, just so that I can reapply some fresh concealer and prime it for the skull kind of sunken in portion of the tutorial. So I wanted to throw in a little analysis on Heather Chandler and Heather's the Musical because I skipped it last time when I did this original tutorial and you guys seem to really miss it. So I'm going to go ahead and get geeky with it. To prime, I'm going to take the Glossier Stretch Concealer in shade Light and I'm going to blend that out with a damp beauty blender. I like Heather Chandler a lot because I think she's a lot of fun. I'm personally a really big fan of the original film. If you guys didn't know, Heather's the Musical is based on a film, Heather's starring Winona Ryder. And even though the movie serves as the source material for the musical, it has a really different overall tone. The movie does have kind of that 80s dark comedy vibe. It's much less laugh out loud than the musical. And I love both of them equally. They really feel like separate entities to me, you know? So I'm going to start off with the lightest shade, that kind of purpley mauve tone. And I'm going to follow the natural shape and curvature of my own dark circles. I'm going to start off with a light hand and I can build up coverage as I go. This light color will also serve kind of as the perimeter of the bruising, so that color will be going out the furthest and be the least concentrated. I think the film of Heather's is interesting because it humanizes Heather Chandler a little more than the musical does. For instance, at the college party she and Veronica go to, it shows how powerless Heather Chandler is outside of the Kingdom of Westerberg, and it gives her a lot more depth as well. At the time this movie was made, I think the party scene was really just supposed to show that older and other people don't really respect Heather Chandler the way that her classmates do, foreshadowing that Chandler would have peaked in high school. However, with our modern conversation surrounding consent and the creepy guy at the party, this scene is much, much darker. And it's interesting that she immediately retaliates against Veronica, almost seemingly in a desperate attempt to assert autonomy and her power and to prove that she's still in control. So even though Heather Chandler isn't portrayed in the best light, it humanizes her. It gives her depth, we kind of see why she's so evil. She's not just evil for the sake of being evil, she's hurt and she's kind of fighting back. Does that justify her actions? I don't know. I'm not, you know, one to judge someone else. But I think that it's interesting and it creates kind of a gray area for her rather than the musical's kind of black and white depiction of her that she is just pure evil. And that's because, of course, the musical doesn't include the scene. Instead, they swap out the scene for the big fun party. I think this, in addition to Chandler's new lines and lyrics in the musical, it's specifically meant to dehumanize her and to make her one-dimensional. She instead serves as a symbolic figure for power-hungry bullies at every level. She's much less cruel and much more funny. She's almost kind of a caricature of the hot mean girl, which makes the audience less sympathetic toward her and therefore less horrified at JD for killing her. The musical is much more focused on the Veronica JD dynamic and the order in which he plans to off their classmates I think is really important. And that's why I'm so happy that Blue is removed from the show. Controversial opinion, I know. Wait, wait, I have to do that in a JD voice. Hang on. Controversial opinion, I know. Dreadful etiquette, I know. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. So from what I've heard, the new song that replaces Blue is called You're Welcome, and it's much less insidious and much more silly. Real quick, I'm taking the Naked 2 palette and I'm going in with Blackout, that matte black shade. If you look at the scene surrounding Blue, it's really upsetting, especially some of Veronica's very specific lines. She is in fear that Kurt and Ram are going to assault her. Like, it's not funny, and I think people really love Blue just because it's raunchy and I don't know. I think I, I've always felt uncomfortable about that because it's 
is she scared? Like, she is in danger. And obviously, I don't support JD's actions, but at least he's, uh he has a reason behind wanting to defend her. It's not that he's defending her because they started a rumor about her being easy. It's that they wanted to attack her. Which again, not okay what JD does, but a little more justified. And I think here by making the song silly and making Kurt and Ram less of a threat, it makes JD more of a bloodthirsty killer. He's not out to kill Veronica's would-be attackers. He's out to kill just your regular high school bullies, which makes JD a lot less stable. Which comes back full circle to Heather Chandler. Her being one-dimensional is meant to assist in showing how unstable JD is and his descent into... insanity, I guess? He starts off by killing her, who is black and white, pure evil. We've got Kurt and Ram, who are, you know, not great guys, but it's a moral gray area, especially with the removal of Blue. Then JD starts to hunt down Duke and the rest of their high school, seemingly really innocent people. So now we've got this slow build into JD hunting people down, less about his own vigilante justice and more just about killing people. Makeup-wise, I'm deepening in that contour with that dark purpley gray shade, and I'm just following the natural curvature of my cheekbones and then down kind of into my jaw and mouth area to really hollow out my face. Taking this white matte shadow, I'm going to hit all the high points of my face, and I'm just kind of pressing that in with my finger. This was just kind of a spur of the moment thing I decided to put on my face, so if I were to do this again, I would probably go in with like a cream highlighting product, or maybe a concealer that was a few shades lighter than my own skin. Taking this blue wet and wild liner, I'm going to line the underside of my lips and kind of create a sticky base primer for the blue eyeshadow shadow that I'm about to press in. I'm also going to go ahead and conceal out my lips using that same Glossier stretch concealer, which instantly kind of makes you look creepy and dead because it kind of gets rid of all of the life in your face. What's nice about this concealer is because it is that sticky pot formulation, so it's not going to wipe off the same way that a liquid concealer would. It's a little bit more tacky and it holds its own. And I'm going to set that with that same white eyeshadow from earlier. For the blood, I'm going to be taking this liquid lipstick by Anastasia in the shade Heathers. Of course, how appropriate. I needed to work it somehow into this tutorial, so I thought I'd go ahead and use it as the blood. I'm going to be having it come out of the corner of my mouth, kind of the idea that Heather Chandler was placed on her side or fell to her side after she was poisoned. So that's why we have the Drano, the veins, the blood, everything kind of going in that direction out of the left corner of my mouth. I chose to make this tutorial a little more cartoony and a little more avant-garde for a couple of reasons. One, I didn't want to do anything too difficult. I wanted this to be something that you could realistically just kind of do on Halloween, even if you're not really a makeup person. And number two, I didn't want it to be that gory. It's actually really, really upsetting um, <laughs> what happens if someone were to ingest Drano. I unfortunately looked that up in preparation for this video, and it's actually really, really upsetting. Like, I would 10 out of 10 recommend not looking it up. And now I'm afraid that a bunch of you guys are going to look it up because I specifically said not to. But be forewarned, it's just kind of gross and upsetting. So I didn't want to try to replicate that. I'm also not that good at like gore or special effects makeup, so lol. I also didn't want to do a tutorial that required you to go out and buy like a bunch of liquid latex or gelatin or like special effects stuff. I just kind of wanted to use stuff that most people would have or could easily pick up. Real quick, I'm going to hollow out my collarbones and neck using that original dark gray purple shade, and I'm also going to mix in a little bit of black in there. Something I find kind of interesting about Heather Chandler is that she's such a person who's concerned with power and dominance. If you look at the archetype of every other hot, mean girl out there, Chandler is much more aggressive than all of them. For instance, when Heather Chandler makes Veronica come over to her room, get on her knees, and beg and plead for her forgiveness, that's a power play, because you know that she's not going to forgive Veronica, and she really doesn't care if she apologizes, like their friendship is ruined. But she just does that to assert her place as the dominant one, to show that she's in charge. Regina George, on the other hand, and every other mean girl, as they 
say in Mean Girls. The fighting in girl world is much more sneaky, but with Heather Chandler, she's outright. She fights. She is in the savannah going for the kill, which is interesting. There's very little facade with Heather Chandler. There's very little show. She says what she means and she just does it. Ooh, quick question of the day. Do you think Heather Chandler is a ghost or a figment of Veronica's guilty conscience? Let me know in the comments down below because I really think there could be a case for either side. There you guys go. That is my Drano Chandler tutorial. I hope you guys had fun. I sure did. I don't usually get to do this, so I had a good time. Welcome to the spooky season. I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so, so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!